elections make a breakthrough. The Syrian government has blamed Turkey for the lack of progress. Negativity in the Turkish policy process resulted in the modest uh, outcome of Astana 5. I would, I'm saying that because the Turkish delegation objected to the adoption of any document related to the implementation of mechanisms of the agreement on the de-escalation zones. Iran, Russia and Turkey attended the Astana talks, which revolved around setting up four de-escalation zones in war toward Syria. Russia said there was no agreement over the contentious issues of the boundaries and policing of the safe zones previously agreed. Moscow said documents outlining how the four zones should work need finalizing. Tehran, Moscow, and Ankara agreed in May to establish four de-escalation areas in a potential breakthrough toward ending the years-long war in Syria. The trio said it would hold the next round of talks in Astana at the end of August. Let's speak to our correspondent Mohammed Ali now, who joins us live via Skype from Damascus. Now, Mohammed, tell us a bit more about what the disagreements might have been between uh, the different sides, particularly when it came to these de-escalation zones. Well, it seems that uh, uh, the problem was perhaps uh, regarding uh, the supervision uh, on the de-escalation uh, zones agreement with regards to the forces on the ground that will be supervising those uh, areas and deployed in those areas. It, it is believed that the Syrian government uh, uh, rejected, of course, uh, the presence of uh, Turkish forces uh, on Syrian soil uh, uh, around those de-escalation uh, zones because at the end of the day, Turkey has attacked Syria and played a negative role in the uh, crisis, of course, by supporting terrorist groups. This has been the Syria's, uh, the Syrian government's stance, and perhaps this is one of the main problems that stood in the face of uh, any progress in the Astana uh, talks. However, uh, uh, Mr. Jafari, head of the uh, Bashar al-Jafari, head of the Syria uh, government's official delegation to Astana, said that uh, the Turkey has played uh, a negative role uh, and had a negative stance since the first uh, round of talks of Astana. And, uh, the, uh, and of course, such negativity, this negative role and stance led to only modest results uh, at the end of the day regarding this uh, final round of talks. Now, Mr. Al-Jafari's statements following the conclusion of uh, Astana talks was uh, uh, almost all of the negative role of Turkey. But he said that the goal of participating in Astana and Geneva talks is to press ahead with any effort uh, that, may, that leads, actually, to stop uh, the fighting, uh, help the Syrians and regain stability, restore stability to uh, uh, Syria. But he said that the Syrian government's efforts in this regard uh, was faced by uh, other efforts, uh, opposite efforts uh, uh, by uh, uh, by Turkey. And also he pointed out in a statement uh, following the conclusion of the uh, Astana uh, talks that since day one of Astana, it was uh, the Turkish rules. Uh, uh, the Turkish rule was a negative one, and also he pointed out uh, to uh, the issue of the de-escalation zones in particular. He said that the Turkish uh, side, the Turkish delegation in the uh, Astana talks, uh, uh, was opposed to reaching any detail uh, regarding this, uh, uh, of course, de-escalation zones uh, deal. Also, Mr. Al Jafari pointed out a very important thing that. The agenda of this meeting, this fifth round of Astana talks, was actually to finalize uh, and speak of all of the details of the de-escalation right. zones. But the Turkish side did all of it can to uh, to to uh, stop such uh, discussions and uh, to reach any kind of a positive uh, solution. Okay, that's our correspondent Mohammed Ali reporting via. And he's joining us live now by Skype from Michigan, Mr. Do Mr. Duff. Uh, Russia and China, of course, against any military action against North Korea, as well as sanctions. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, we've uh, we've heard a lot of rumors lately that uh, there's to be a new world order of Trump, with uh, the U.S., Russia, and China marking and marching in lockstep. Uh, this pretty much puts a nail in that. Uh, there's absolutely no truth to that at all. This is the U.S. again playing the sanction game. Now, the, the sanction game against Russia is running politically another direction in the U.S. with Trump holding the line on sanctions. But the sanction warfare that went on so strongly under Obama, it's, uh, sanctions are war. They're more than just economic war. They're an attempt to destroy the military economic capacity of a country as well. 
Sanctions are as much a military attack as an invasion. This is the U.S. staking out territory in the Pacific aggressively against China, putting a finger on Japan, and ostensibly to support South Korea, a very powerful nation, more than capable of handling North Korea at any time. Now, this is the U.S. definitely, definitely showing its global uh, aggression, its, its global uh, aims. It's the U.S. demonstrating that it's there to play hardball in the Pacific and in this case, to front off Russia and China, as far as forcing Russia to uh, to veto a uh, UN security re resolution, the U.S. sticking these missile systems out there is another attempt at ringing Russia and China with uh, a capability nullifying their uh, their defense defensive military capacity, nullifying both China and Russia's Western-based nuclear option. This is a very much an attempt to gain a nuclear primacy capability in the Western Pacific, which NATO has been using with its advanced radars on Russia's eastern border, and uh, which uh, has also brought the U.S. in, in line with uh, aggressive moves against Iran. We're back to 1947. We're back to encircling the. Uh, the communist world is uh, as some Americans oversimplistically see it. So, Mr. Duff, um, going forward then, what should we expect to happen vis-a-vis -vis the Korean Peninsula? Obviously, Russia and China have made it clear they do not appreciate the deployment of THAAD in the region and that that adds to a destabilizing um, atmosphere. Um, what do you make of that? Well, with the U.S. foreign policy in disarray, with uh, Tillerson, a very weak Secretary of State, with the U.S. military under Mattis dictating policy to the White House and uh, to a military that now dictates foreign policy in a way that it never has. It has weapons, and the weapons are the hammer, and all they see are nails. And so when they look at Korea, they have only planned to invade. This is, uh, and Trump has no ability to stand against this. U.S. policy is going to be purely military, purely aggressive, and has no concern at all toward restructuring uh, to a global balance of any kind. The U.S. is, is rogue, purely rogue.